today I want to talk about this notion of having urges. I've talked previously about having cravings and hunger versus cravings. And today I want to talk about this idea of an urge. And you will know that it's an urge for food when it becomes very urgent, when the desire that you have for a specific food is now it's priority so the urge is urgent so something trying to get your attention that happens rather quickly so that is stemmed that urge i just want to highlight that the urge is stemmed from our mind it's from a thought that's created in our mind and the way that i look at urges is it's like a little toddler having a bit of a temper temper tantrum trying to get your attention so the urge is like necessary right now I need your attention and I have this need that needs to be met like right now 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 the cookie I need it now like I want you, I want you to pick up that cookie I want to put it in your mouth now that's the only thing that's going to solve the actual issue so just like a toddler there are a couple of options when that demand or that temper tantrum comes to the surface is the first thing that we can do obviously is to recognize it and to actually see if it actually has any authority over us you know if some stranger on the street were urging you and prompting you to do something beyond your will that you actually didn't want to you wouldn't probably pay a lot of attention to it unless it's something that was threatening your life however if we are listening to our own brain and realizing or thinking that it has clout or authority um, or that can control us, we, we may feel compelled to take care of that desire or that urge or fulfill that demand and to eat the cookie or eat the chips or whatever, have the cigarette or that glass of wine, whatever it is. But if we were to look at the urge as a toddler, it comes down to a couple of choices of how we can deal with it. Uh, one is we can give in. We can give in to the demand and reward the toddler by giving it whatever it wants, whether it's the cookie or the bag of chips, we'll use food in this example. And what we do by rewarding that behavior, the temper tantrum with the food or giving it what it demands, we are now creating a subconscious pattern and paving the road for when the toddler has a demand, screams really loudly and urgently that it wants something, we give it what it wants, that just creates the loop of this is what happens when I make a big fuss and I have a temper tantrum, I get the thing that I'm actually after. So how I get the thing that I'm after is create this little temper tantrum. And in our case, this is an urge. So is that supportive? We're just concreting actual behaviors over and over and over again. So that's the first option. We can give in to the desire, to the urge, to the little toddler and its demands. The second thing that we can do is resist it. Now, if you've ever tried to resist a toddler, you may know it's very exhausting. It's frustrating. You put out a lot of effort um, to resist or struggle against or ne like negotiate why. So eventually you can become exhausted with that effort and in the end, give in because you've just given up and you're going to give in because it can be very exhausting and very um, uncomfortable when a toddler is having a tantrum, tantrum, and particularly if it's in public. So the other way that we can resist when we're looking at food is if we are to resist the urge, the desire to have something that we truly want, is we may try to remove it from our environment. You know, take out the cookies, take out... Um, take out any temptation so that we don't have the temptation. But the problem with that is if it ever crosses our path again and the urge arises, we don't have the equipment to kind of navigate it being in our vicinity and overcoming or getting through the urge. So this idea of resistance really is not very effective because the more that we resist, the more it persists. So the third option is to allow the urge without actually interacting with it just allow it to be and what happens if we don't pay attention to the toddler who's having a tantrum eventually the toddler gets tired gets tired out and just kind of gives up it fizzles out so this is not a comfortable path to take to allow the urge to just be because 
it can create a lot of emotional disruption. We can be having to feel all the feels rather than soothing the feels with the food or the reward that we're desiring, right? So the cookie is a way to kind of get us through some uh, uncomfortable emotions, perhaps that we're trying to shush or smother or tuck away that we don't want to have to deal with, um, what, regardless of what it is, if it's frustration, loneliness, boredom, stress, uh, anger, celebration, it can be many different emotions that we're trying to kind of negate or quiet. So going through the letting it just be there makes us have to feel what we're actually feeling without quieting it by a reward and getting the dopamine rush from having that little bit of cookie or cake or whatever it is that you were desiring. So the idea of allowing it to fizzle out and let it just be there is in some ways very simple because there's no action to be taken. Like you just don't do the thing. Like the quickest way to overcome the urge is just not do anything, right? That's the most simplest thing. Just don't give in, <laughs> don't give in. There's nothing nothing to do. The uncomfortable part is to feel the feelings that come along with not doing anything. And because you're not, you know, quieting those kind of feelings and those sensations. So I hope this makes sense that while it may be easy to do, to stop doing the thing, the effort comes in feeling the emotions of letting the urge just pass. So I call this surfing the urge, just allow it to be there. It's like you're riding the wave, just sit with it, allow it to be there and not give in to the toddler and not to resist it. So I hope that's helpful.